So there's not only one, not two, but three snakes <laughs> sitting in the rafters of our barn. Pretty sure my wife's never coming up here again. <laughs> So, another wonderful day here on the farm. Jenny's working on organizing and cleaning this up. So we're gonna be working on uh, whoopsie days. Cause we're gonna be working, <laughs> I hit the hoe. I hit that hoe. Uh, we're gonna be working on actually getting the playground finished and actually finishing projects. Uh, the one problem is, is I cannot find the head to my weed eater. I'm not sure where I took it off at and what I did with it. But what we have here is we're gonna uh, frame this out. As you can see, Ella's playing in the sandbox, uh, which will actually open up all the sand so she can actually play in that. Uh, and then we have the posts, uh, the landscape timbers that'll go around it. And I have wood chips in the truck to- My beautiful potion. Your beautiful potion um, that we will uh, do that. And then also there's gonna be some shutters they get put on this uh, on the sides. I have to make that too. Um, we talked about doing planter boxes too on it, on the side. Um, I don't know if that'll happen today. It might, um, I gotta see what wood I have and everything else. And if I can do that, but for now, I'm going to have to locate the, the weed eater head so I can actually weed eat down some of the taller weeds. I just need to knock them down low enough to where I can put new wood chips on top and it'll be a little bit easier to manage. I just didn't, I didn't do thick enough. Last year we just had extra wood chips that we used for the garden and then used in there. Which, if you're ever looking for wood chips, contact your local uh, tree removal places that are around you. Cause I get my wood chips for free. There's a guy that, he's probably six miles from my house that I pick up wood chips from. And it's absolutely free, it's just a huge pile. I go there, load them on my truck, bring them back. They're awesome for your garden, for doing the beds. They're also great for doing, I'm out of breath. Um, they're also great for doing underneath of your uh, playground uh, as a little bit of a softer landing. So I'm gonna keep looking for this and see if I can find it. <laughs> we'll go from there. I'm sure no one will be surprised. It was in the barn, like my wife said it would be. She was right, but I'm not gonna tell her that. So uh, it was in the barn. I could have swore I left it down by the house but apparently I did not. We're very loud this morning. We've already eaten because I'm gonna check them out. Why are we being so loud this morning? Being very needy. Two little babies back there. Very loud this morning. All right, we'll get this thing weed eated and then we'll uh, put out posts and whatnots. All right, so can't finish that project. <laughs> uh, I thought my nails were gonna, my nails were gonna fit but, uh, and actually work, but they do not. Uh, so I'm gonna have to get some new, some new screws. I need four inch screws. I had two, so I attached two because uh, I need to screw the boards together, and then I have spikes to go around and support it the rest of the way. So anywho, I'm gonna work on making this gate. If you guys haven't already watched my gate video, I'll leave the link in the description and above so you guys can see how I build gates. I basically build them all about the same, same way. 
Um, I slightly change it up occasionally. Like this one, I think we're doing like the wire actually on the inside and I'm building it out of two by sixes. So it's still the same exact concept that I do. I'm gonna put that up. So then I can move my hog panel over here and then I bought a gate for in between. And that was just because it was a little bit easier. Um, it was an eight foot gate. I, six feet is about as big as I like to make gates. Cause once you kind of start getting above that, you get a lot of sag out of them. And also with the pigs pushing against this one, uh, or the other one I should say, cause it's really important that once I get them in here, I don't want them to get in my garden because all my, all the hard work that we're going to do to put in this garden is basically going to be gone if they get in there, cause they'll just destroy it in a day. So I definitely want to make sure I'm secure between them and the garden more than anything, which they're coming over to say hi. Hi yeah, piggies. Piggy, 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 piggy. Piggy, 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 piggy. So now we've officially separated the pigs from this side. So the plan going forward is, is what we'll do is we'll actually rotate them back and forth because they're really good at tilling. So what they'll do is they'll till up all this land behind me here and really get it ready for us. And we will potentially put chickens on there too again. Uh, we put chickens on this um, a couple times the first year. Uh, chicken poop is actually really good for your garden. It's got a lot of nitrogen and they scratch and peck and kind of get all the bugs out of the soil and everything else. So they're super good for your for your garden. Pigs are good too. We're gonna see how the soil does this year. I think one thing we're gonna have to manage is actually the pig poop. I do worry about there being an excessive amount of pig poop and the smell. So what we may do is we might actually clean it up, put it in a wheelbarrow, put dump it in with the chickens, and let the chickens spread it out wherever they are. Um, we did that with cow poop. I don't know if you guys remember that video, but we, we did the same concept with cow poop, but we'll do it with pig poop too. Uh, so with this done, uh, my wife just got back with the with the extra supplies to actually finish the project from before. So hopefully we can knock that out, uh, then work on getting some wood chips. And then I want to try to get this bunny hutch actually uh, set up so our bunnies can come outside and be and be in that, um, and then uh, potentially till till everything too uh, will be the other plan uh, for the day. I don't know if that'll be a separate video or if it will be part of this one, but there'll be another. We may do just a garden video uh, alone by itself uh, away from everything else. So uh, we'll work, we're gonna work on getting the rest of this done. Oh, also, don't know if you saw, but Susie uh, tried to eat all my tools, uh, luckily, while I went away for the 85th time to grab something, but uh, she tried to eat my, uh, my ratchet set, so that was nice of her.
So I feel like I should share this with you guys. I was down here working on this. Jenny's working on getting the mulch out. And I went up here to get some spare wood. And lo and behold, I look up to where my spare wood is. And I'm like, what's that up in the corner of the barn? Well, guess what? So here's my pile of spare wood that I was getting ready to look through. And out of the corner of my eye, I look up here to the seam of that. I'm gonna try to zoom in. I don't know how well this is gonna work. Oh yeah. And there is Mr. Snakey, curled up in the rafter, up, <laughs> up against it. Uh, look at him. Uh. <laughs> Needless to say, Jenny said she's never coming in the barn again. My door closed. Let's see if I can get a better shot of him. I guess he's up there because the metal roof's hot. And I guess he likes it because it's a little kind of chilly in the shade, I guess. But it's just a black snake, but kind of crazy that it just curls himself up up in there. I've seen him a couple times down here on the ground uh, kind of hanging out, but that's the first time I've ever seen him like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, there's like three snakes up there. Hold on. sitting in the rafters of our barn. Pretty sure my wife's never coming up here again. <laughs> All right, so this piece of plywood's actually gonna go on top of the bunny hutch, because uh, it'll work a little bit better because the problem we were having was the seams with this. Those other boards actually have a seam that uh, interlock over each other, which is really nice. Kind of like a tongue and groove, except it's not a tongue and groove. Um, so I need to cut a foot off this board. So, I could go get a bunch of stuff, get my things, hook it up on here, measure, be precise. But for this, it doesn't really need to be that precise. I'm gonna show you guys kind of an easy way if you're looking to cut. Uh, I wouldn't go any more than a foot or two feet if doing this method. Um, so all you need is your tape measure. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it, you're gonna put it right at a foot. You put it right at a foot. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use that as a guide as we go down through this board and cut. Yeah, watch out for the pokies. Um, so we're gonna use it as a guide. Obviously this isn't ideal. Um, so we're gonna be very careful not to put a lot of weight on this because we potentially can flip the board up and everything else. But, uh, which I might actually slide it back on here a little bit more. Um, but obviously this isn't precise. This will get me close, but what I'll do is I'll actually hook it into my, uh, basically into the first uh, slot in the saw and then we'll just go down through here and cut her open. So, of course, this lovely rabbit hutch is eight feet, two inches. Standard plywood is eight by four. So I'm two inches short on either side. It's not a huge deal, but I'm afraid that like potentially rain can get in here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna use some of those, uh, my favorite thing, my fencing boards, and I'm actually gonna give myself a little bit of a lip off the sides here with them, and it'll actually cover this gap. So they're about five and a half inches wide. So I'll put one here, put one there, and then I'll run two more in the middle, just to give it some extra support as we go down through here. Um, and it won't hurt the functionality of anything at all. So it'll just, and I already have them, they're free. So, free, they were scrap. This is why you should always keep your scrap. Anything bigger than a foot, I would say always keep that scrap. Unless you like, if it's nice wood, if you buy like cedar or something, you might want to keep that too. But anything else, if you buy two by fours, whatever, you got a foot left over, keep it. Because I can't tell you how many times I've used scrap and it has saved the day. So we'll get this slapped on here real quick.
bought them all. Here they all are. They're gonna have a nice new home at the river. All three of them. Bye okay, guys. All right guys, so that's all we're gonna have for this time. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't done so already, click that like button, that subscribe button below. It really helps me out. Uh, and as always, I'll see y'all next time.